Hi, I'm Sue O'Hora, Henniger's writer-producer, and today we're going to talk about call sheets. So I have some notes in front of me that I'll, you know, look down at while uh, I discuss this. But you'll also see a call sheet on your screen that has everything kind of made anonymous. Um, but I'll step through it piece by piece. So let's talk about call sheets in general first. Call sheets are a hugely important organizational tool that producers use to get ready for a day of filming. So typically um, there is one per day of filming, even if you're gonna use a lot of the same cast or crew throughout, I will create a sort of master document that has everyone's information in it and then create one call sheet per day of filming that I will typically send to the crew and to whomever is either coordinating the on-screen talent or the on-screen talent itself. Uh, and I'll send that in the afternoon or the evening, the day before the shoot. So as you, you'll see, as I go through, it's got a lot of contact information and a lot of information pertinent to the shoot for all the different people involved in it. Um, but that's the basic gist of what a call sheet is and, and what it, its purpose is. So I like to start them early in the process, start them a few days before the shoot or even more if I have that amount of time, because I think the way that my template is laid out helps me think through the process and all of the different steps I need to go through in terms of planning. Uh, the other thing that I would like to, to you know, warn everybody about at the, the very outset of this is that call sheets for feature films and TV shows will look different than what I'm showing you. What I'm showing you is a call sheet that is geared towards documentary style shoots, interviews, corporate projects, maybe small commercial projects where your cast and your crew total are less than maybe 20 people. Let's look at the very first section in the call sheet. So the very first section is gonna be where we you know, name our production, in this case being Jane Doe, and the date that this call sheet pertains to. That's, you know, very self-explanatory. Uh, the next block is for production company. I have our address in there, and then obviously my information, and the way that Henniger works, every project that comes in has uh, a project manager attached to it as well. So I would have that person in the office uh, that we could use if we needed to call them, help set up a courier, do something like that on the day of filming. So I would list their information in here as well. Uh, a lot of people would say, you know, if you're not filming at the production company, why do you need to have the address for the production company on the call sheet? Uh, and I think the best reason is Invoicing. At the end of the shoot, all of the crew people are going to need to invoice you. And that is an easy, you know, shorthand, that block for them, knowing who they're going to send that invoice to, basically me and my company, Henry Media Services. So the next block in the call sheet is for client information. A lot of times my clients are on set and they're really, really involved. In some cases, they're directing the project themselves, which I've sort of imagined with this project. So Client's going to get the call sheet, and it's also going to be, you know, an person for, important person to make sure that they are there for the shoot, that they are, uh, you know, understanding all the different pieces that go into it. And typically, I have a little go back and forth on the call sheet with the client uh, in advance of when it's ready to send to the crew. So they're the double check to make sure everything is set. This is everybody that you want on camera. Everything's taken. The next block in the call sheet is on-site contacts. It's a super important part of the call sheet because this is where you're going to list uh, the folks who are going to get you into the building or get you into a loading dock. They're the people who are crucial to starting the day on time, which is why you definitely don't want to be hunting for that information. And if you as the producer get there, uh, you know, 10 minutes early for the day, the chances at least with the crews that I work with a lot, um, that one of them has beaten you there, even if you are more than on time, uh, is, is good. And so for them to have that on the call sheet and be able to call the building person and say, hey, I'm, I'm out back, can you help me get in, we're here for the shoot, is really great, it could save you some time. Now the next uh, section of the call sheet is where I tend to put you know, the shoot day, one of one, one of two, uh, you know, two of four, whatever day you're on, that's where you list this information, as well as what cameras you're using and what, you know, Kodak you're shooting in or what sort of um, frame rate you're going to shoot in. 
Now, Henniger is known for its post-production, so I typically will work with an editor and work with post-production people before a project ever starts shooting so that they know in advance what I'm planning to do. And they're very prepared for that on their end. But it also gives me the opportunity to work out any questions. Well, what's this project for? Maybe you should shoot it this way. Maybe you should shoot it that way. Having this information on the call sheet is a signal to the camera people, camera assistant, director of photography, whomever's going to be handling the camera, how they need to set up their cameras for the day, which is something that they often like to do in advance. Um, or it can also raise questions. Like they may send this and they'll immediately get on the phone and say, hey, I got a question about X, Y, Z. You know, the way that you want to do this, does this mean I need this extra piece of gear? Or does this mean that, you know, I should plan for X, Y, Z thing? Um, so it's helpful information and it can kind of trigger conversations. Again, it's one of those pieces that I think is very helpful from a planning perspective. If you get to this point in your call sheet and you go, oh, I don't know how I want to shoot it. It's a great mental jog to say, I should go hunt down the editor and talk to the client and talk to the DP about how we want to do this. Also a super important part of the call sheet, locations. The addresses people are going to be going on the day of filming. Um, if there were multiple locations in my imaginary day, there'd be multiple locations listed here. Uh, for the sake of this, I just put one in and it is, is huge. <laughs> and number one, I really like to go as many times as I can and kind of scout and make sure I really know where I'm directing people. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later. I put pretty detailed directions for crews in my call sheets. Um, but, you know, it should be high in the call sheet because it's very important information. Um, the next block is weather. And weather is, you know, less important if it's a day of filming in a studio. Obviously, you're, you're not going to... This day of filming, which I've imagined as, you know, a day in a studio filming interviews back to back to back. Uh, where usually the crew is going to come in through a loading dock. Maybe they're even coming in through a garage. The weather is not typically going to be that important, but if you're filming in an office and everything you want in your background is going to be windows and it's going to be a really, really sunny day, that's that could cause you to have to change your schedule because you might have to do something to limit the amount of light that's coming into those windows or the fluctuations of light coming into those windows. Um, the other thing about it that's important is, you know, if you're if you're going to be loading in and out outside right when you think it's going to be pouring rain, maybe you can go through a garage. And obviously, most importantly, if you're filming outside for the day, having making sure that your crew can be comfortable and dressed appropriately is a, a very high importance. So the next part of this call sheet, the kind of nuts and bolts, who's your crew? What are their names? How do we get in touch with them? These are the email addresses you're going to send the call sheet to. And then what is their call time? Call time is what time do you want them to be there at the facility? Now, I could talk forever about scheduling. Um, it's kind of an art and a science, but my number one uh, tip for young or new producers would be to be realistic. If you are going to have to load in through a garage and a series of elevators that you don't automatically have access to, you got to go get the building manager and you're going to have to come into a studio environment and light a green screen. If you set yourself up with a schedule where you're going to be arriving at 8 a.m. and rolling by 8.30, you're, you're almost guaranteed to be setting yourself up to start the day a little behind schedule. So I would just say, you know, it comes with practice, but be realistic about your schedule. Um, that kind of leads me into the next block of the call sheet, which is your on-camera talent. So in this case, I'm imagining that Jane, my director, my client on the project, will coordinate the people that are going to appear on camera and will let them know what their call time is. Again, the time that they should show up at the facility or at you know, the location where you're filming. Um, and maybe they all don't get a copy of the call sheet. And it's, it, call sheet has so much information, it can kind of feel like over, it can be overwhelming or drinking from a fire hose for folks that aren't used to reading them or aren't used to seeing them. And I don't think you want your on-camera talent to feel like this is gonna be a daunting experience before they ever step on set or get in front of lights. A lot of people, you know, they get nervous just for the idea of being on camera and then they get into a studio and there are lights or there's a lot of people around and that's another level of potential discomfort. So I think, you know, sometimes it's great to have the person who knows the on-camera talent or who, in this case, I would assume that my, you know, director kind of wants to interview these people and has talked to them in advance 
to let them know, hey, I want you to be there at 9 a.m. and here's where you're gonna be and here's how you get in the building. Um, Again, my note on scheduling that sort of filters through to this is you want to give your on-camera talent enough time to come in, get a drink, get the lay of the land, hang up their clothes, um, chat with the makeup artist if you have one about what's going to look up best on camera, and go through makeup so that they have enough time to comfortably to comfortably get there and settle in a little bit before you're rushing them in and throwing them on camera. So in this case, I've, I haven't given them enormous amounts of time, but I've assumed everybody arrives about a half an hour before they're so scheduled to start sitting and getting on camera um, just to kind of go through that process. So the next chunk of my call sheet is dedicated to gear. Uh, I don't use this that often, but I keep it on my template just in case there's some strange piece of gear that you think you need for this specific, you know, shoot that you don't, you know that one of your crew people are not bringing with them. Most of the crews that I work with own their own gear and that's great. So you know in advance that if you're talking about gear, it's coming with the gaffer. You're talking about gear, it's coming with your camera person. Um, but this is kind of nice just in case you need a specialty item. Um, and then the last of my sort of grid part of the call sheet is lunch, which seems can seem kind of superfluous to put on here, but I, it, it's another good thing organizationally to keep on here just to, to give you that prompt to think through how am I going to feed these people. Um, in this case, I'm imagining this is a shoot in a studio that's right in the middle of the city and I've built in my schedule enough time for everyone to sort of spread out, go wherever they want. They can go together, they can go separately, they can get lunch and eat whatever they want and just put the receipt on their invoice to me and it works out great. Um, I don't have to cater it. I don't have to bring food in. I don't have to check with people about their dietary restrictions and everybody gets, a, you know, gets exactly what they want um, out of the, you know, out of their break. Um, a lot of times you're filming in places where you can't do that though. You know, I have had shoots where I'm in a field, in a park, but there's nothing, there's nothing for, you know, you can't give people enough time to leave and just go do whatever they want. And if they could, there wouldn't be that many options anyway. Um, when you're putting together the call sheet, a lot of times this is where that will dawn on you and you'll say, oh no, I really need to figure out a catered lunch that can be delivered to me. Or, you know, how am I going to get this done? How am I going to work it into my schedule too? So that the food is ready in there when we break and it doesn't interrupt my day if, you know, it's a little bit late or my, my shoot is running a little bit late. Those types of considerations come into play here. Um, the next section of my call sheet is parking. And sometimes this is, again, not a very big consideration, but in this instance, you know, you're talking about a shoot in the middle of the city, almost guaranteed the first thing I, uh, a crew is gonna ask me is where can I park? How's that all work? You know, in this case, I'm imagining you're going in through an alley. So I'm including a map so that people can see, you know, yes, this address is one thing, but you actually have to access it via an alley that, and the entrance isn't necessarily on that street or right next to that address. And those types of details I think are really key to keeping your crew from circling around in morning traffic and getting frustrated before they ever sort of step foot in there. It's you know, the details of the freight elevator and what kind of vehicles your crew are driving and making sure that the parking structures are gonna have enough clearance for them to park in the structures. Um, that's something that in DC city garages, they often have really low clearance and some of our folks have trucks. So it, that's also good to know if you have crew members who have a choice of vehicles to bring for a shoot. Um, you don't want them to pack everything up in their you know, high ceiling van and show up thinking it's gonna be fine when they could have packed what you need for your shoot in the minivan and made their day a lot easier. Um, because obviously in a city street parking is hourly and it's tickets and it's, it's hard. So um, that cider sort of consideration is something that I always tend to think about around the time that I'm making this call sheet. Um, the next thing on the sheet is the schedule. And this is a real, you know, minute by minute breakdown of what we're doing each moment in the day. 
as you can see, I've got each of my people coming a half an hour beforehand for makeup. I've got a nice break for lunch in there. And I've got the shoot scheduled such that we shouldn't go into overtime. Um, even if we go over a little bit, I always try to give myself some padding just in case you never know when an interview is going to have really incredible stuff coming out and you don't want to say, okay, wrap it up. I've got the next person. You want to let them go. Um, one of the last things that I typically put on a call sheet is a note about attire. Um, what are these folks going to be wearing? Are they going to be wearing business casual? Should be prepared for suits. Um, and if this is going to the talent, I will always ask them to bring options. I'm probably going to do an entirely separate video about what to wear on camera. Um, in this case, because I don't imagine this call sheet specifically going to the talent, I've really put it there as a signal to the person who's coordinating talent to remind them to talk through attire with the interview subjects. And I typically have a whole other you know, one sheet that gives more in-depth information for people um, to kind of help guide them in making good choices and picking things that they're going to really feel comfortable and look good in um, on camera. So that's essentially a call sheet, um, really basic organizational tool for productions. And I hope everybody enjoyed this video. If you have uh, comments, please comment below. If you like our channel, please you know like, subscribe. We're always trying to put out new content. Um, and we really do listen to the comments in terms of what people have been suggesting uh, we tackle next. So uh, thank you very much. And I uh, hope this was helpful and uh, have a great day. Bye.